Okay, um, before I tell you which way we're going to go with this, um, there were a couple of things that I didn't bring out in my last video, um, points on the creation that I have in front of me now. <laughs> I forgot. Okay, one thing, there was one more thing I wanted to point out. When we went back to Colossians 1, um, the same set of scripture that we read before, um, I want to bring your attention to a word that we already talked about um, as far as its meaning. So, um, as proof of what I was trying to tell you about Genesis 1.26, about let us make man in our image after our likeness. And remember, we went over the word image, and when we looked at the word image, it meant vain show. That's what it meant. It meant an idol, a vain show. Um, the word image also meant a phantom, okay, an illusion. This is not a creation of God. This is not a creation of mankind. This was something that the Elohim did, okay, within creation. Within the six-day creation, Elohim came along, and this is what they did, okay? So now... But what I wanted to do, just to prove this point, is I wanted you to go back to Colossians 1. Um, we've already read this a few times. We've already looked at it in other aspects. But this is a real interesting one I want to show you. If you go to Colossians 1.15, I'm going to read it. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Okay. Who is the invisible, the image of the invisible God? We talked about it. I said it was Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the image of God. Okay? And it's the same word used as in Genesis 1.26. Okay? That word in Genesis 1.26 was H number 6754 in your Strong's Concordance, which meant a phantom, a vain show, an image, an idol. Okay, that is not a creation of God. Now, let's look Colossians 1.15. We're going to look at the word image. It's a different number. It is number G1504. Okay, now what on earth does that mean? Let's read what it is. A likeness. That is literally statue, profile, or figuratively a representation, a resemblance. That's what the word image means. There's nothing here about a phantom. There's nothing here about a vain show or an idol. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. And right here, that word image has a totally different meaning than the word image in Genesis 1. Anyway, that is another truth that I just I had to make sure it came out. There's one other aspect that I did not mention at all. And I told you, there was one similarity in Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. You know what that is? The angels and when they were created. There's no mention of the creation of angels in Genesis 1 creation. And then in Genesis 2 creation, it never says anything about the creation of angels. You know why? Because these creations came at a later time. The creation of the angels is never specified in our Bible, though the Bible tells us that those angels were created. Okay? So, when you look back at the creation of angels, these angels had to be created sometime between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2. They were not created in any of these two counts of creation. That was just another point that I had to make. Now, the big decision, drum roll. Okay, this is where we're going with this. I have decided that before we get into Adam and Eve, we need to know about the angel wars. We need to know about the wars that went on in the heavens. Okay, I am going to cite sources that I have learned different things from. And um, so that they can have credit and, hey, check them out. They are a wealth of information. Um, I know some things, but I know some things because I learned them from other people that knew much more things. And so, 
um, upon learning this, I've, I've just come to a certain understanding. Now, do are we all in agreement on all things? Probably not. I'm sure we have little differences. Um, not salvational differences. We all were of the same mind. Um, but there, I might see something different than them, what they see. And they might see something different than what I see. But I am going to cite different sources. Okay. Now we're going to get on to the angel wars. And what I decided to do is to put together a chart. Sometimes some things are better for me to explain when I have a visual way of showing them. And since I don't have any idea how I would take a PowerPoint presentation and mix that in with this film, I'm about as um, electronically challenged as it gets. I'm just going to have to go the old-fashioned method, and so I did some scribbles on some poster board, and that's as high-tech as I'm going to get here. Angel Wars. What happened? What happened? That's what we want to know. What was going on? Okay, who was Lucifer? What were the angels doing? What, what was going on? You know, during the time that this earth had been created, destroyed, created, and um, recreated. What's going on? And so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to, um, as I try to visually show you something here, then we're going to read the scriptures. We're going to read certain scriptures. Now, is this an exhaustive amount of scripture that I can find regarding this? No. I just needed a basic idea. I threw in some scriptures. I will say that the Dakes Bible has a lot more references to the very same thing that I'm about to show you here. Actually, there was one scripture that I don't have in front of me now that just really brought something home. And I, I wish I would have put it on the chart, but we're just going to go on without it. So here we go. We are going to start from the beginning. All right. And I'm not, I did this like quick, so. <laughs> All right. I don't know if you can see this. At the very top. We have Jesus, the Holy Spirit, Father God. This is the Godhead, okay? Under the Godhead, there are powers, thrones, dominions, principalities, the magistrates, all these different um, types of angelic beings. Okay, all under Father God, all under Jesus Christ. Okay, but in the beginning, when these powers and principalities were, not principal, yeah, when these powers and principalities were created, um, supposedly, if you read into some of the Apocrypha, now this comes, this particular thing I'm going to tell you comes from Zen Garcia. Zen Garcia, oh my gosh, this man is another wealth of information. This man is very well studied. Uh, very interesting to listen to. You can find him on YouTube. Um, he also has a website, I believe, called fallenangels.tv or something. He does radio shows. Very good. Just a, an incredible testimony, incredible information. Okay, so anyway... Um, it is my opinion that it was a third of the angels that Lucifer was put in control over. Now, according to Zen Garcia, from what he has read and he has learned is that Lucifer was the very first created angel. Okay. And when it came to the other angels, he was up on top. We know from scripture that he led the music. And I'm checking because I'm pretty sure I have this information 
all out here. Okay. But anyway, Lucifer, either way, whether he was the very firstborn or not, it is also uh, something else that I've learned. Now, the church teaches that the reason why Satan hates mankind and the whole reason for all of Satan's rebellion and anger and hating mankind is because he's jealous of mankind. He's not going to bow down to mankind. I'm here to tell you, those angel wars came long before Adam was created. You know that for a fact because if Satan, who is Lucifer, who became Satan, entered that garden as Satan, as the serpent, then you know this war started long before Adam. This didn't start because Satan was jealous of Adam. Satan saw opportunity. He was not jealous of Adam, okay? The real one that Satan was jealous of was Jesus Christ. That is who he was jealous of because all things were put under subjection of subjection. I'm sorry. All things were put underneath him, okay? All things were subject to him, all underneath him. Even Lucifer, okay? So Lucifer was, in fact, jealous of Jesus Christ. Jealous of Jesus Christ, okay? When the wars in the heaven broke out, when Lucifer uh, had found, when iniquity was found in his heart, okay, he ran many things. He had a whole lot of responsibility up in the heavens and um, he was jealous of Jesus. That's really what it boiled down to because he thought he should be in charge. He should be in charge of everything. Look, he had all the responsibility. He led the worship. He was the covering anointed cherub. You know, let's find out who he is um, or who he was. So, let me see, because I know that I have these scriptures right here in front of me somewhere. I have a hard time finding everything. Anyway, um, alright, let's go to first one. We're going to go to Ezekiel 28, 11 through 17, okay, before we go on to the next part of this. It says, it's 11 through 17, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. The king of Tyrus, in this instance, was Lucifer. He was the king of Tyrus. The Bible also mentions the king of Tyrus elsewhere, and he is speaking of an earthly king. But in this particular verse, when it is talking about the king of Tyrus, we are talking about Lucifer, as you will see. Verse 13. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, and the diamond the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Here you are. Here is the first proof. Lucifer was created. So any religion that is trying to tell you that Jesus Christ and Lucifer were space brothers, I'm here to tell you that is a big that lie. Jesus Christ was from the beginning, as I've already shown you in scripture, and in many more scriptures, I haven't even gone near, and then in this one, this is where Lucifer, he's no space brother that belongs to Jesus, okay, as a brother, uh-uh, he was a created being. Verse 14, thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. And I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. 
Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created. Again, reiterates, you were a created being. Till iniquity was found in thee. Here's another very weird thing, and I want you to go back. Think about Atlantis, okay? Think about that period between Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, okay? By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. One interesting point that Zen Garcia brings to the table is that Lucifer means light bearer. Okay, we know that the Freemasons, that is their god, Lucifer. We know that Lucifer became Satan. But as Lucifer, okay, he had a brightness about him. And he was the covering cherub. Do you know how important of a role that is up in the heavenlies? That's like, you're the top dog. And then Jesus appears on the day of Lucifer's creation at, um, he appears and he is the bright and morning star the bright and morning star is Jesus Christ he is the real light there is no other there is no other light that can compare to him it was Lucifer that when the morning stars sang together at the brightness of his coming, Lucifer got jealous. And that is when iniquity was found in him. Now, Zen Garcia teaches all of that. That is not my, my thing or my area. Okay, I don't know that. I, I understand it in that way, and that makes perfect sense to me. How could he be jealous of mankind if mankind wasn't even created yet? This war began long before mankind. Okay, now, another thing that I want to notice about what we read about him. Thy tablets and thy pipes was prepared in thee the day that thou was created. It is believed that Lucifer led the worship. He led the worship. I want you to think about that. You see how wicked music is today? Have you even looked have you noticed any of these music videos, how bizarre they've gotten, how crazy it's gotten? Guess who's leading that worship? And it's worship of him. Who's leading it? Same guy. Same guy. Only he's Satan now. Okay? Who is inspiring these new musicians to come up with this high strangeness? Same one. Same one. He did the worship in the heavens, and now he's, he's teaching man how to worship him down below. Okay, another point that I want to make out in this scripture is two times it says that Lucifer is a created being. He is nowhere on the same level as Jesus Christ. Not even close. He was an anointed cherub. He wasn't one of them chubby babies with wings, okay? <laughs> so get that picture out of your head. That's just a creation of man. Maybe Michelangelo or somebody. All right, I got one more scripture to go to concerning Lucifer. We're going to go to Isaiah 14, 12 through 14. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? We're talking past tense. Past tense. What nations did he weaken? I know he's weakening the nations now. He probably spends quite a bit of time at the White House, but... Okay. For thou hast said in thine heart... And this is exactly where we are going with this. I will ascend into heaven. 
I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Wow. That is just a whole lot of self. A whole lot of abomination. Now we're going to go back to my chart. Don't try to get ahead of me on this chart because you're really going to have to have me to explain this <laughs> for it to make sense. I just kind of drew it up in the best way that I knew how. All right, so Father God, Father God, he has all these angels. They all have different functions, okay? Lucifer had his own function. The other angels have theirs, you know? Like I said before, some pronounce judgment. Some of them are just messengers. Lucifer led the worship. He was also the covering cherub. You know, we have archangels, um, warring angels. We have... There's a whole lot. There are a whole lot. The Lord has his own system of things in the heavenlies, and they all work a certain way. Okay? Now, this is my belief that I bring to the table, and this is what, until I, if I run across something else that makes more sense than what I'm about to tell you, I will come back and I will correct this. But right now, this is my belief. My belief is that, what I believe personally, is that Lucifer had a third of the angels underneath him. Okay? A third of the angels. They were, he was in charge of a third of the angels. Okay? There are so many different levels all the way down that um, each has its own function. Well, in Lucifer's case, he had a third of them to start with. This is what his rulership was over um, before the rebellion. Then, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get in the picture. Okay. Then Lucifer led a rebellion against the Lord God. So we're going to go to Revelations 12.4. Here he led this rebellion against the Lord God. So let's look that up. Let's go to Revelation 12.4 in our Bibles. Okay. And his tail, talking about the dragon, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. We're just going to pay right now attention to the first half of that. Alright? He took a third. He took a third of the angels. Now we're going to look at Michael and his angels. Okay, we're going to look at Revelation 12, 7. That Michael and his angels fought against the dragon in this war in the heavenlies. Okay? And then we're going to look at Revelation 12, 8. Because Lucifer did not win that round. Okay? Michael and his angels won that round. So let's go to Revelation 12, 7 and 12, 8. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. They were kicked out. You ain't here no more. You've now lost your home. So they prevailed not. We're talking about Lucifer, his rebellion, his angels. They didn't, they, they went after, they were going after the throne of God here. And it was Michael and his angels fighting that third of the angels in, that, um, and they were not be able, they were not able to 
to prevail. Okay? Now we're going to go to the next part. This is, this is a term from Zen Garcia that I love. <laughs> right here is the Federation of Light Court. This is God's court. God has his own court. You know, when you die, you're going to go up before judgment. You are going to go up before the Lord God. He has his own court. Sorry, but the scriptures say he does. Let's go to Psalm 82.1 in our Bibles. We're going to look at this court. Psalm 82.1 God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. Small g. Okay? Now, the next verse I want to look at is Psalm 92.13. So let's go in our Bibles to Psalm 92, verse 13. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. He has courts. Seriously. He literally has courts. Got his own system. So what happened was, these angels rebelled. They fought. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And they lost. Lucifer and his angels lost. Okay? And they ended up in the Federation of Light Court. Now, before I continue this, I don't want to mess this up because I am running out of time on this tape. So, um, we are going to come back and we're going to find out what exactly did happen within the Confederation of Light Court. What did happen? What judgment was pronounced on Lucifer, who became Satan, and the one-third of the angels that rebelled? And we will find that out in our next video. Be blessed.